Hello and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we've got an exciting loom along called the Chic Retreat Cowl. And we are using the all-in-one loom from Authentic Knitting Board Company. We've got our new loom hook with a comfort grip from a knitting board as well, and a couple of balls of Red Heart Boutique Treasure that I'm using on this sample today. Thanks, and let's get started. All right, let's set up your loom. Today I've got my all-in-one knitting board set up. We're using it in the round. We're going to have both sliders on either side. Go ahead and open it up and set it to the um, side on here. And then on the other end, we're going to scoot it in and count in one, two, three, four. And then on the uh, after the fifth one, right here on the sixth, you're going to line up and put the slider here. So you have to take your bolt out if it's already on the end. Take it out. Move your slider in and then put the bolt back in this last hole here. That'll create 96 stitches in the round. Okay, I'm going to start my um, first stitch here. And if you've got a stitch marker, pull it out and put it on. Okay, we've got our stitch marker here. I'm going to place it on my first peg. You can start wherever is most comfortable for you. I'm going to make a slip knot, which I've covered in other videos. I'm just going to go real quick. Put the tail on the inside and we are going to do an e-wrap cast on. So you're going to e-wrap around all the pegs in, in a complete circle and then e-wrap again, knit over and come back. Pause your video. Okay, so we've e-wrap cast on every peg here, 96 pegs all the way around. And we get to this first one here, and we are going to knit three, purl one, knit three, purl one, all the way around the loom. And on this pattern, every time that you hear me say knit, I want you to do a flat knit. So we're going to hold the working strand over the top part here, and then we're going to knit the bottom over the top. Now you can also do a U wrap if you feel that you are too tight whenever you uh, do a flat knit, um, then you can, you can do that as well uh, where you hold the working strand back a little bit after every peg, uh, but it's, uh, it's not necessary. And now we're going to purl, so we're going to pick it, the stitch up from the bottom, purl it, take that off, and put it back on, and we have other videos for that if you uh, are unfamiliar with purling. And so we're going to knit three and purl one. And you're gonna make all the way around the loom. And then we're gonna repeat that row just the same, knit three, purl one for four rows. So do four rows, knit three, purl one. And pause your video and we'll see you in a moment. Okay, well I have finished my four rows of knit three purl one and you can see on the back side here uh, where it's really evident where I've got the purl rows going on. And you can also put uh, painter's tape or some kind of tape along here and um, put marks where all the purls are going to go. Just put like a line or uh, you could write P if you want to, uh, to make that note for yourself. Uh, but after a few rows, you start to see the pattern develop and you don't need it as much. So after the four rows, we are gonna do two rows of figure eight. And the way that you do it is you see where your working yarn is coming from. You skip behind the pe peg that is next to it, wrap around that second peg, come around the back, and then go back on the one you missed and go back again. And so it makes a figure eight line in between these. So you're gonna have an eight around these pegs and go ahead and knit over. And we're gonna do that again. But now we are coming from the second peg here. Technically this is peg one. And we're gonna go around, skip, and make a figure eight. And if you notice, this one has already gotten uh, wrapped and knit off already once before. So every peg on this row is going to get knitted twice. It's just every other time it gets done. So we're gonna do that again. 
go skip one, wrap one, come back around the skipped, and then knit over. And you're going to do that for two rows. And when you end up on this last peg again, uh, after the second row, then stop. So pause your video and do your two rows and we'll meet back up. Okay, I'm coming to my last figure eight section. And I'm wrapping around these last two pegs. Okay. And so it ends up on this, um, well, it's the 95th peg. I'm still going to go ahead and wrap around or skip the 96th, wrap to my first peg, and then e-wrap that last 96th peg. Okay? So you're not technically done until you do that. And yes, I've wrapped this first one, but uh, I want the working strand to come from this very last peg, which is the 96th peg. So now we're going to start uh, our next section, and this is a chain section, and this is attributed to um, Bethany Daly, who uh, developed this stitch is the chain, um, the chain lace stitch, and what we do here is we're going to e-wrap the very first uh, stitch here. We're going to e-wrap it. Uh, six times e-wrap and knit off. So this is the only time we're doing any e-wraps. So we go one Sorry, it's hold, hard to hold here. Let me see if I can do it this way Two Three Four Okay. You're going to start building up this extra amount back here. It's going to have a chain to it. Okay. And then this is the only one that we're the first one that you knit over is going to be only one strand, and you'll see that in a minute. Um, all the other ones we're going to be doing a two over one um, for uh, some of these. So now we're going to take our um, number two peg, which is right here, and then we're going to move it to three. Pick that up and move it over to three. And if you're working with the yarn I am, then you might lose some of it, the fiber. Just pick, make sure and pick that up to where um, you've got the whole strand here. Okay, so we've got move two over to three. And now we're going to um, wrap this um, number two uh, um, five times. One, two, three, four, and five. And now we're going to wrap the peg that we have put two strands on. We're going to knit that. Uh, we're going to wrap that one time, and we're going to knit that over two over one. And we're going to call this one. So we've wrapped a knit off one time, and now we're going to move this first top wrap over to peg two. Just flip it over with your knitting tool, and that's number two. I'm going to move this over and put it over here. That's number three. Keep picking up from that second peg. This is knit off number four. Knit off number five. And pick this up and knit off number six. So now what you've done is you've got chains, six chains here, and then you've got your working strand is coming at the back of this empty peg here and then you've uh, knit chains up now. And your working strand, if you notice, is coming from the bottom now instead of from the top. Now what we do is we're gonna move uh, our next peg over to skip one. Okay, and now because it's coming from the bottom, 
we're going to knit. So whenever your working strand is coming from the bottom, you're always going to knit off on the, uh, the peg over here because once I knit off this first of the six, it forces this working strand to come down to the bottom. So it goes bottom to bottom. So now we're just going to knit off five more times. Sorry, let me get this in the camera right. We're going to knit off five more times. So we already did one. This is two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Now we want our working strand. See it's coming from the top. I want it to go across the back here. So we're still going to move this over every time you're moving one over one. Now we're going to use this as a holding peg. This next peg is a holding peg. So we're going to wrap it five times. One, two, three, four, five. And now we're going to do the sixth wrap over here and knit two over one again. And now we're going to take all these over and do just what we did that very first time. Make sure you're just grabbing one at a time. If you have to push those bottom ones down, that's okay. Move it over and we're going to call this two. three, four, five, and six. Okay, you want to make an empty peg. And now remember, this working strand is coming from the bottom, so now we don't need a holding peg. Knit one over, uh, knit two over one here, sorry, and go ahead and wrap and knit off. That's two, three, four, five, and six. And now again, the strand is coming from the top. We're going to move this over. We need a holding um, Sorry, let me move this. <laughs> let me move it in the camera here view. Okay, so we've moved this one over here. And so now what we're going to do is one, two, three, four, five on the holding pin and wrap this next one and knit off and move them over and knit off. Okay. Okay, so just to show you on the back here, when you have a holding pin, it's going to hold over the back. When the working strand is down below, you're, you don't need the holding pin, and so you just start knitting off. And I want you to see that every other, where there is, um, well, every other pin on the front, every other peg on the front is empty, but on the back, every other set is going to be completely empty. So this is a holding back so we had a holding pin empty holding back so we had a holding pin empty and then holding back and so this is down at the bottom now and so we don't need that area to hold so we move this over this is just the last time I'm going to do it move this over make sure to grab all your strands and go ahead and wrap Sorry, wrapping it off. 
one, two, three, four, five, and six. Go ahead and do it and go all the way around the loom and do one row and we will stop over here. Okay? Pause your video and come back. All right, we've come to the end of our chain lace section and I have got one more loop on my peg. And I'm at the bottom of this one here. See that? Um, now, we cannot continue in the same fashion that we have. So, um, because this is at the bottom, I have one more loop here and then this other one, I need it to be at the top when I join this up. So I'm actually going to leave this one as where it stands. I'm not going to leave it empty. And I'm going to take and wrap it and start uh, a chain on this, just this last one. This is the, just the one exception. So we're going to take it and do one and wrap it six times. So this is two, three, Four. Five, six. Okay, so now we've got this coming from the top and we're going to meet this other one. Now it'll be a little bit closer on this one, but with all of the chains and everything, you're not going to really notice it as much. So uh, now we are ready to start the next section. We're going to purl all these stitches that are um, shown here in front. Now, you're going to have stitches behind uh, that we saw earlier. Uh, you're going to have this uh, extra loop here from the back. Just bring it forward. So if you want to kind of prep your loom first before we start going around so that you don't miss something, uh, look in the back here and um, every other one has an empty and every other one has a just a ladder yarn coming from the back. Let's look at this back side here. It's a little easier. See how this one's empty here? And then this one has a ladder yarn. So just take your hook and go around. So go all the way around your loom and meet me back up. All right. So we have uh, prepped our loom. Now we're just going to take all the loops that we see in front and purl them. This will be a purl row. Now, we're going to do something different. Where I have this empty peg here, I want to join it with my knit row or my purl row. In this case, it's going to be a purl row. So I'm going to do something here called a half hitch. And I'm going to do it in the opposite of an E-wrap. So we're going to take our yarn and we want to twist it in a way that makes the working yarn come from the bottom. So take a twist and loop it around and pull it. That's it. If I did an E-wrap, it would wrap it around and the loop, the strand comes from the top. So I'm not going to do that. So now it's good in there good and tight. So you don't need to do anything else. It's like a yarn over except it's uh, the opposite direction of the E-wrap coming in. So we're going to knit, um, I'm sorry, we're going to purl all of these. And then when we come to an empty peg, we are going to half a hitch. So let's do that half hitch again. So we've come to the empty peg. We're going to put our two fingers at the back, put our thumb on top, roll it down, okay? And now place it on the empty peg. Just like that. Continue purling and putting a half inch on, hitch on the empty ones. Pause your video and meet me back up. All right, you have got past the hardest section. We have made the chain lace stitch and then done the foundation row. Now we are going to do a row of knit. This is again a flat knit, uh, or you can do a U, whichever one is easier for you. Um, if I was holding this in my hands, 
Uh, normally I would uh, actually go a little faster, the, so the flat knit should be much faster for you. So do one row of flat knit and come back. Okay, our next row is a purl row. Go ahead and purl all stitches. Pause your video and meet us back up after you've done all your purl. We've completed our purl row and now we're going to do two rows of figure eight. Again, go from your working strand, skip a peg, wrap a peg, come back and wrap the one you skipped. Again, you end up wrapping and knitting over every peg twice on the board. Again, do two rows, pause your video, and come back. <laughs> or rather, pause your video, do two rows, <laughs> and come back. All right, we've done our figure eight rows, and now we're going to do another flat knit row. Go ahead and pause your video and do a flat knit row. Okay, now we are going to make a purl row. And this row is the last of the first section of our scarf. We have a first, middle, and last section. The middle section is a series of drop stitches that we are going to do some crossing on. So either side of your, your cowl is going to look like the beginning of what we just did. Go ahead and pause your video, finish your purl row, and meet us back up for the next section. Okay, we're ready to move on to the drop stitch section. Here we're going to e-wrap and yarn over three times on each peg. So we're going to e-wrap one time, and then we're going to yarn over three times. One, two, and three. Move on to the next peg. E-wrap, knit over, push that down, and wrap one, two, three times. Let's do that again. E-wrap, knit over, wrap three times. One, two, and three. So we're going to continue doing that all the way around the loom until you get to this last peg and we'll meet back up. Okay, so I have um, e-wrapped all the stitches and wrapped three times around each before moving on. We've gone all the way around the loom and this is my last peg and I went ahead and e-wrapped and knitted over. But I'm actually not going to um, wrap this peg. Now you can, but uh, what's going to happen is we're actually going to pull out all of our drop stitches to do the next thing here. Uh, and instead of just um, pulling out the drops and purling everything, uh, we're actually going to move them, uh, which is um, which is something new. <laughs> uh, I'm not aware that anybody else does it, but this is just something that I put together and I think it looks uh, awesome. So <laughs> I really like it. I hope you do too. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is, uh, the reason why I'm not yarning this over is we're going to start pulling uh, these stitches off, all of these three that are stacked up here. And um, whenever we pull all the stitches down, um, the extra slack will come down with this working strand here. So there's no sense in actually wrapping it because you're going to get it. And you'll see why in a moment. So um, what I want you to do is pull off these uh, yarn overs and, and don't try and just take them um, all at the same time. You can pull them individually and go over like that and then you can see them pop off and you can just let them hang until we do it. Now that can be um, a little tight for some people so uh, you can kind of mess with it and pull them and make them loose and then start pulling them over but the thing that I actually have started doing so um, let me just clarify you can do this but the way this yarn is it has kind of a roving type and you can get your um, knit tool uh, stuck inside them. 
Um, you can actually go behind it and grab the ladder yarn here and then kind of work your way around and unhook them. And I think it works much better. It's uh, easier on the yarn. So go through and if you need to turn them over here to see them, uh, then you can start pulling out your um, drop stitches. So go along the back, pull these off, and uh, start pulling out the drops. And uh, pause your video and uh, we'll meet back up and start tugging on these and getting it ready for the next part. Okay, so I've pulled out all of my drop stitches and again, I didn't wrap this one here. But we are going to take our work and pull on it gently and we're gonna start pulling out these drop stitches. And if you see in the back here, I've pulled these and uh, they're, they're now elongated and if they get a little uneven, you can just tug on them to make them more even. Okay, so go all the way around your loom and then as soon as you get down here, when you start tugging on this, you'll see that your working strand gets a little bit lower. So go ahead and go around and get these all uh, nice and elongated. Pause your video and come right back. Okay, I've pulled out all my stitches and you can see they're very loose. Uh, and if you've noticed when you were doing it, it may have popped off a few times. Just try and put them back on the pegs in the right order. And um, they are supposed to be loose. We're gonna get them to where they stay on here. Uh, but for now, um, this is perfect for us. So what you need is you're gonna need a, a stitch marker that's really large, or you're gonna need a cable needle, um, or you can use both. Uh, and your um, loom pick, you're going to actually use um, either both of these or one of these and then your, your hook uh, or your pick, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to do a right cross cable but in a different way with a drop stitch and this is the part that um, I have not seen done before. So if it's called something else, I don't even know what it's called yet <laughs> because this is something that I'm I've been working on. So we are going to use uh, groups of six stitches at a time. We're going to um, have these three right here. This first one, two, and three are actually going to cross over to the right. So you want to count four, five, and six and put those three on your cable needle. So do one, two, three. Pick those up and take them and hold them in the back and just lay them down. Okay, so that'll stay just like it is, or use your large stitch marker. Now we're going to take these and cross them all the way over. We count over three. So pick them up and count one, two, three. Put it down. Pick this one up and over three. Okay, and then all we need to do now is take our cable needle and put these back on here. One, two, and three. There's other ways to get off the cable needle. That's just one. And make sure only one stitch on each peg. Now, uh, to get them to stay, you can, you can do the technique and go ahead and purl, which is the next row, and get these to stay in here uh, nice and neat, and then uh, move on so that you don't have anything uncrossing itself as you go. Now you can continue with what I'm about to show you and not have to do this purl, but I would suggest that um, you go ahead and, oh, see, I'm doing something I shouldn't. Okay, this is what I was doing. And I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this on the film and show you, but I started purling the wrong one. So wanna purl, um, make sure your working strand is over on the top of that and um, just purl the first stitch. I'm sorry about that. So take that and purl. And go ahead and tighten it up and then go ahead and do your the, just these six that you just did and then they aren't going anywhere. On such a large project and especially if you have other things going on in the background um, you'll find that when you get to this area here, you're going to want to um, stop if you're going to need to put your work down because you really want to complete these rows all at the same time.
Okay, we've done one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we can stop with our working strand here and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do the next set of six stitches and we want to, um, if you need to pull this back so you can see them easier, uh, count one, two, three, and then we're gonna do these three here. One, two, and three. Hold it back and then move these stitches over. And move those over. The other way that you can pull these off of the cable is to do it. Use the back end of the cable needle. And you want to make sure that they're in order. Okay, so purl these in the sections of six as you go. Keep doing the same thing all the way around the loom until you get all 96 stitches moved and purled. And we'll see you in a minute. All right, well we have crossed all of our drop stitches now and the back and the inside of your loom should look like this. Have them all crossed and you'll have this little hole in between, okay, to so where they all um, cross each other. We're gonna do uh, one more uh, knit row with the flat knit and one more purl row. So go ahead and do one row of knit and come back and I'll remind you about the purl. Okay, we finished our flat knit row and now we're going to do a purl row. Purl every stitch. Okay, we're back and we're going to make our drop stitch row again. We're going to knit the first stitch and e wrap three times. One, two, and three and then go ahead with the next one. And what I like to do is once I knit one off, I'll actually count one, two, three, four, but I'm actually wrapping the next one over and then knitting it over. So that's, that's actually how I kind of get my little rhythm going uh, when the camera is off. I'll just sit there and count in my head, one, two, three, four, except, ha, huh, see, I got off myself <laughs> and then uh, go over so so we'll just do one two three over four and keep that going and continue all the way around now that we've got two sets of the drop stitches on here you can see the pattern emerge and this is what it looks like with the regular drop stitches on here uh, we're actually going to do five sets of these um, drop stitches and then a foundation row. So you're going to alternate. So we do drops, foundation, drops, foundation, and keep repeating. So I'm going to call this section one. And so all the odd rows are going to line up with each other, and you're going to do them the way we just did. And then the even rows, which is section two and four, is where you can alternate. So you can uh, choose to alternate on the side like I'm about to show you. You could even leave these drop stitches and then do another section and cross them and uh, alternate between the two. Um, or this next section you can line them straight up if you want. So what I'm going to do is offset in the sample uh, that I'll show you here. And what it does is it creates this uh, nice wavy line and then a diagonal run. And uh, this is actually not blocked right here, but see how you can see the stitches. So it makes this nice woven lattice work here with a wave to it. Very pretty. So we're going to continue on, and I will show you how to do this. Uh, you are going to uh, actually use the stitches, the, the three prior stitches uh, before. So you've got... Um, still the set of six as we did in the previous drop row when we moved it. Uh, these one, two, three, and then um, actually the ones before it, the one, two, three, before, uh, before that row are actually going to move over. So we're going to pick up these first three 
instead of uh, four, five, and six, pick up one, two, and three, and lift them up, and then move over the last three of the previous one, two, and three. And we still have our working strand. It's, you can't see it, but the working strand is uh, going to need to come to the front here and in between the last peg and the first peg. So whenever we do go to purl, uh, we will start here and work our way over as normal. So now that we've got these put back over here, we're going to put them back on. And these stitches are moving these backwards. And so you still have a right cross cable. So these were moving over to the right. Now, uh, if you want to go ahead and purl these three, you can, but leave these alone. So I'm going to go ahead and move the next set over. So we have, um, you can see very clearly because my color changing is showing these first three. So we've got these three that are going to pick up and move. And we're going to move these next ones back. Pick these up. And then you can move these with your fingers or you can move them with the pick um, or another uh, cable holder. Sorry, my hand is in the way here. Okay. So we move those on over. And now you can put these on. Okay. So now we have successfully crossed these. Uh, you can go ahead and start purling to make sure that you get this set in to start for the foundation row. And uh, go across crossing all of these over in the same way you did before. Once you have those first set done, uh, it's just a matter of repeating yourself uh, until you get to uh, the last three from the end. Pause your video and we will meet back up. Okay, we finished our second dropped row section, number two, and now you can see that it's offset. This is the opening uh, between two of, this, uh, two of these six sets of six and then now it's now in the middle and so the second row is going to be the offset so we are um, I'm going to turn this around here and so you can see what that looks like from the front so now I'm just going to give you uh, two rows to do at a time uh, we're going to go back through and I hope that you have printed off in the link uh, your pattern here. Um, print that off or save that file and then you can check these off. So this next one that I'm starting to do here is the flat knit stitch again. So we're going to do a row of knit and then after you are done with the flat knit go ahead and do a purl row. Pause and come back after, after your uh, flat knit row and then your purl row. Okay, now that you have finished your purl row, we are on to our next, uh, which is then another odd row of drop. So we are going to wrap, knit off, e-wrap three times again, just as we have been doing, and continue. Pull those off, move them to the right cross, just like we did on the first row. And then after you do that, you're going to do um, your, your purl and then your knit and your purl again and then repeat it as the uh, even row that we just did. And then we'll do one more odd. So on all the odd rows, one, three, and five, um, you'll do them like we did it the first way. And the even rows, two and four, you'll do it um, uh, with it shifted. And after you do that, we'll just pause your video, uh, mark the spot that where you are, and um, we'll come back and finish this up together. 
Okay, so we've done our five sections of the drop stitch rows, and this is what it looks like. So you can see how it alternates here. I've got my first section here, and then it offsets, and then my, uh, so that's the second, and the first, uh, and the third all are identical, and then the fifth will be the same. So the second and fourth rows are going to line up. So after I've done that, you want to complete your, um, you do your purl after the drop, and then you do a knit row, and then you do a purl row. So after you do the fifth, you do want to do your knit row and your purl row. Now that completes those sections. We're going to do a flat knit row. So pause your video, do your flat knit row, and come back. See you in a minute. All right, we've done our flat knit row, and now we want to do two rows of the figure eight stitch. Remember, you're going to go past the, uh, you've got the working strand coming out of one peg. You want to go past the next peg, wrap around, and then you're going to wrap the peg that you missed. So then we're going to knit those over. And then now we're going to do this again. You're going to pass a peg, skip a peg, wrap the one next to it, and then go back and wrap the one that you skipped so that every peg gets knitted off twice in, in the row. It just it gets skipped and then you go back and anyway so that's how it goes. So we're gonna go around and do two rows and pause your video, finish that, and we'll meet back up. Okay, I'm at the end of my figure eight section and I'm the second from the last peg. Make sure and skip this last peg. Go to the very first peg or just on this row and wrap around and you do your figure eight stitch because we're trying to get your working strand to come out of that last peg. So this is the same as we, how we did it on the last figure eight rows before. So now that we are um, coming out, our working strand is coming out of the very last peg, now what we want to do is do another flat knit stitch row. Um, because I've done this before, uh, I don't want to keep stopping the video every time, so I'm just going to give you the next three rows instructions. We're going to do a flat knit for one row, and then we're going to go and we're going to do a purl for one row, and then we're going to go back and we're going to do a flat. So you're going to do three rows, and you're going to do um, flat, purl, flat, and I'll put the instructions on the screen. Okay, pause your video and meet me back up in a little while. Okay, we are ready to move on to the chain lace stitch row. And it's going to be just like we did in the beginning. We're going to e-wrap and knit off six times on just the first stitch here. So it's just going to be one over one on the first time. Then all the other ones are going to um, be two over one. So that's two, whoop, three, four, five, and six, and then it kind of gets in here, so I'm just going to pull that back, and that's the extra little chain that you're building, and then looking at our directions over here, we are going to now move peg two over to peg three. Okay. Oop. And my flat knit stitch was too tight for that one. And I am doing all kinds of things here. So we are going to pick this up better. I'm going to hold this back. See, I mess up too. <laughs> so we are going to get this hook in here my goodness it does not want to cooperate tonight okay so I'm going to go ahead and kind of pull this back a little bit open this stitch up a little bit and now I'm going to move it over you see how I just kind of made a little bit of extra room there mm -hmm. and so I'm sorry I may have been off camera I hope I wasn't um, okay so now I've moved peg two over to peg three and then we are going to, um, let's see, we're going to wrap around the peg five times and we're not going to knit off. So that's the peg two that we just moved off of. So one, two, three, four, 
five, and then we're going to do the sixth one over here because what we're trying to do is get everything over to here. But we need, remember again, this working strand up here at the bottom. So I've got, now I've got my two over one. We're going to go ahead and move all these over. Knitting off as we move them over. And remember that first one that you did counted as the first one of six. So you had five on the other side. So, so now when the chain is at the bottom, we're going to take our number four peg here, move it over to five, and then we can go ahead and knit these two over one and start our chain of six again. So now this first one appears at the bottom. So now where that was at the bottom here, it's now at the bottom here, and we're gonna build that up with a foundation of six. So we've already done one. So this is two, three, four, five, Six. So this is like we just got finished with the one that we did earlier. And so now you do the same thing. You're moving this over. We're just repeating this whole process. Whoops. Let me make sure that doesn't come off. We're just going to repeat the whole process again. And this one is going to move over to three over here. It becomes your new two. And it moves over. might be a little tight so if you're watching this in advance make sure that your um, flat knit stitch isn't so tight mine's a little bit tight if you want to do it as an e-wrap instead you can do that as well so um, now that we've got that over here we're going to do the placeholder of five one two three four five and then wraps the six over here and we'll, we'll make sure and get both these uh, these two over here so keep going in that way and uh, pause your video and come back and I'll give you the last couple of steps. We're almost done. Okay, I'm on the last peg of my chain round and I'm at the, so well it's the second to last peg that I'm coming off of and it's at the bottom. So again, like we did on the first time around, we're going to knit six times on this peg here. This is the last peg, so that's one, Two. Sorry, this is a bad angle for me. Five and six. I might have got an extra stitch in there, but that'll be all right. Okay, so um, these two chains are gonna actually be very close to each other, but that's okay because this is at the top and then uh, this one's at the top and we don't want any kind of working strand to be dangling out there. It's not supposed to look like a drop stitch. It's supposed to look like a chain. So now we're ready to go on our, to our next row and to set up for the next row, remember what you wanna do is take these ladder yarns and pop them over uh, the, the back side here to be on the front okay so go all the way around your loom and do that and I had actually done this um, the step before I had just done um, most all of them except for these last few and so I'm actually just doing it right here I'm not going to pause the video and uh, you can pause it though and come back and I've got all of these forward and then you should have um, every fourth one will be totally empty and those are where we're doing the half hitch so this row you're gonna do pearls, just as we did the first time around. Pearls on three stitches in a row. And then you're gonna do a half hitch on the fourth one. So that's a pearl, 
then another pearl, and then another pearl, and then remember the half hitch is like a backwards E, just kind of make this and wrap it around, flip it with your finger, and put the E on there, and get one peg and pull it, and that way the working strand is now coming from the bottom of that. And then you're going to continue on making three pearls and one half hitch all the way around your loom. Pause your video and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, we've got two rows of figure eight wrap. So we're going to do two rows of that next. Now you should be getting at close to the end of your first ball of yarn and we are really near done the project and um, I'll show you what mine looks like. Yep, I don't have much left. <laughs> so I'll be stopping here in a little bit and showing you how to change the color. Alright, see you in a little bit. Okay, so we've come to the end of our figure eight row, and I actually have about 15 inches to two feet left of this tail here. And before I start my um, border row, which is three knits and one purl, uh, I wanna go ahead and change out this yarn because it's not gonna last me for three more rows, or for four more rows, rather. So what I wanna do is um, take my strand, um, we just, just leave it long, however long you've got, um, if you have to start in, in the middle, um, that's okay too. Uh, but we're going to do, uh, I'm actually going to substitute in this pattern because I've got, I'm going to do three knit and then one purl. And because sizing doesn't matter and some other things, I'm just going to do a, um, a, flat, uh, a flat method join here. So I went to my other ball that's another, it's actually another dye lot, but um, because there's such a variety of stitches in here, uh, I'm not going to go and try and find the, the end of it that's the lightest. So I'm going to go ahead and put this up against the loom. And I'm going to leave this tail um, a few inches long. And we'll end up cutting it off later. So go ahead and put your, um, your new strand above the old strand. And you're going to lay them across the front. Just like this. Okay. And so the new is on top and the old is on the bottom. And so the old is going to coordinate with the old down below. And we are just going to do one row. I'm going to add this to my pattern here. This is not in the instructions. But I'm just going to add this in. And, uh, you know, tie it in or join it in with any other yarn. Say if your ball didn't have as many yards as mine did. Uh, and that's, this is the way you're going to join those in. So just do a regular flat knit and put those, um, put those two yarns together. So after you've done, well, about six to eight inches worth, you could go ahead and, and cut the other one off. Um, I just let the tail hang uh, or work it in until it's just not there anymore. Uh, you could do the entire row that way so it's consistent everywhere. It just depends on how much uh, slack that you have. So go ahead and run this row all the way around and we will come back and then, um, then I want you to go ahead and do uh, three knits and then one purl and repeat that across just like the beginning side. Uh, pause your video and I'll meet you in a minute. All right, we are ready to bind off, and I've got my working strand coming from this last peg. I'm actually going to go ahead and wrap this last peg, and we're going to do a stretchy bind off. We're going to wrap and knit over, then go the next peg, which would be your number one, wrap and knit over. And then we're going to move and knit over, so move the two I'm sorry, the one over to that last peg and knit over and wrap one more time and knit over. And then now we're going to move this over. So now we have got um, everything's back on our one peg. So then I'm going to refer to these as two and one. So progression 
wise, you're going to keep referring to two and one. So we're going to wrap number two. And then you're going to move the two over to one. Knit over. Wrap. Knit over. And then move. So the first was the setup, and now, now we're all we're doing is wrapping number two, knit over, move number two, knit over, and then wrap and knit over, and then move. So all we're doing is we'll do this one more time. So the set is wrap two, knit over. Move two, knit over, wrap one, knit over, and move. So, wrap, knit, move, knit, wrap, knit, and move. That's it. And you just keep going and it's going to have this nice little edge here that's going to more closely match your cast on edge. It's going to be uh, nice and loose and when you pull this over your head it's not going to feel um, too rigid. Especially if you normally, uh, whenever you knit off a basic bind off, uh, if it seems like really heavy to you, really, um, really tight. Uh, if, if you're a tight knitter, then this is this would be a good bind off for you. So again, one more time, and then I'm gonna let y'all go around the loom, and then you can, we can see the finished product together. So wrap two, knit over, move two, knit over, and wrap, and knit over. And just notice that every time I wrap and everything, I just pull that extra strand here. I'm just kind of getting my tension the same so it's really even. You don't want it really loopy back here. So again, um, if you notice I'm pulling this back and just making sure that my tension is the same every time. Okay, all right, we'll see you in a moment. Okay, when you've made it all the way around and then you've moved your two over to one over here and then knit it off, you could wrap one more time, but um, I'm actually not going to do that. I'm sort of elongated it to show you. Uh, so we're going to take this and pull this off of the loom. And you, if you want to see if yours needs it or not, uh, you can see how close these stitches are to each other. If I had wrapped one more, it would um, it would make too many loops. So what we're going to do is pull this uh, off here uh, and pull pull this through and go ahead and cut this. Okay, so go ahead and give yourself like a five or six inch tail and then cut it and you're going to weave these uh, extra strands in. So just pull this on through five or six inches. Cut that. And this is my working strand. Okay, and you can see where I finished this off. And so now all I need to do is connect these two pieces here. So I'm gonna get me a crochet hook out and connect them together. And then I'm gonna weave in my ends. I've already weaved in this front side, so now you can see this is not blocked, but I've, I've woven in uh, where my start side is. And um, depending upon the yarn that you have, so the test that I had, um, it didn't roll as much. Uh, this, this blend did. And then this side over here matches that, and it stands up a little bit, a little bit straighter. But once this gets blocked, um, and you can choose to not block this, uh, but it won't roll um, as much like this. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I'll show you a few more pictures here while I'm talking. Um, thanks again for tuning in to Good Knit Kisses. Be sure and click on the link for the video. And uh, I hope you enjoy your all-in-one loom and your Red Heart Tapestry yarn. These are great combinations to have together. Thanks for joining me at Good Knit Kisses. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.